Welcome back to Inner Warm Up, where your inner work begins. I'm Taylor Elise Morrison, creator of Inner Workout, and you, as always, are our expert guest. Thank you for being here. The question that we've got on the table today is whose voice is this? And I promise that question will be a lot more clear as we move through the episode. So I consider Inner Workout to be a company that sits kind of at the intersection of personal development and wellness and speaking from my own experience, but also from just conversations that I've had with other people, whether they're clients or friends. When we go into this work of personal development or of wellness, when we start a journey like this, we have a reason, right? We're doing it because we want to heal or because we want to become better. I hope you can hear the air quotes in my voice around better. Or we want to be more productive or we want to be more successful or more worthy. The why behind this can shift a lot depending on what school of thought you're buying into. The why of going on an inner child healing journey versus the why of buying into hustle culture could be really similar or they could be really different, but there tends to be a why. And when you're at that place where you're towards the beginning of a journey, it can be this really powerful time where you are having these mindset shifts that are happening. You realize that you aren't limited in the way that you thought you were for your whole life. You realize that there are other ways of being that you maybe hadn't even considered. And what you also will hopefully learn is that that opening up, that unlearning is a multi-layered process. Here's an example. I think it'll be easier with an example. So I think back to myself who was a baby business owner. And I'd seen people run businesses, but like the business that my dad ran when I was really, really young was like a brick and mortar sock store. There's a lot that goes into a brick and mortar store. And as I started exploring entrepreneurship for myself, I realized, oh, the barrier to entry is a lot lower than it was back in the day. And All of a sudden, I realized if I had a computer and internet and some free or low-cost tools, I could build a business that could actually serve people well. And this was probably, I mean, the first time I, I started realizing this was in high school when I really started to act on it was in college. And in college especially, I got reinvigorated by this idea that I really could create something And then I started consuming a lot of content by business owners that I still respect parts of their business. But before I knew it, I was just basically trying to copy and paste what worked for them and their business model into my own business model. And it did not serve me super well in the long term. So I had this realization, I had this unlearning of the belief that business had to have a super high barrier to entry. But then I created a kind of a a dogma or, or like a rigid set of beliefs around, well, in this new paradigm, a good business looks like this. It doesn't have to be a brick and mortar anymore. That's been opened. But now I have this new belief that a good online business shows up this way. Another example in this I had to keep this one broad because it's happened to me so many times in so many different ways. But I read about someone who is chasing their dream. And maybe their dream is to get a PhD or to ride their bike across the country or to become a digital nomad or to foster children. And I get swept up in like the emotion and the passion and just the clear sense that like, this person cares so deeply about this thing and look what at the impact they're having on the world and look how like beautiful it is for them, how fulfilled they seem. And I try to absorb it as my own. 
So these people are here. They're, they're living their lives in a way that is clearly aligned for them. And they're showing me these different possibilities. Like for the longest time, I didn't think you could be a digital nomad or I hadn't really considered being a foster parent. But that also doesn't mean that those things are for me. And so I can often blur this line between being inspired by other people and then thinking that because it is exciting and inspiring for them, it should also be exciting and inspiring for me. And I'm hoping that you're listening to this and you feel like it relates to you a little bit. It's not just a me thing. I'm really hoping where you've had a similar experience, where for whatever reason you can quiet the voices that you grew up listening to, whether it is specifically like a parent or an authority figure, or if it's more broad, it's just this thing that society told you and was reinforced to you through movies and TV shows and books that you read. And so you get to the point where you quiet that voice, but then right away you replace it with another voice. So we're not doing that thing anymore, but now we're doing this thing. We found the good and the right thing to do. But then the question that I have for you is, okay, so you did that. You quieted one voice. You replaced it with another voice. But where is your voice in the mix? What do you want? What's actually important to you outside of all of that background noise? If those questions are intriguing to you, In a moment, I'll give you some time to reflect on them, but I also want to invite you to check out Camp Clarity. It's a four-week workshop series where we are exploring your personal mission, vision, values, and measures of success to really turn up the volume on your inner voice so that you know the answers of to these questions. You may not know exactly how they manifest in certain situations, but you've got clarity on your voice and your desires. So if you you want some dedicated time to dive deeper into these topics, you're going to love Camp Clarity. Let me repeat the questions that I just shared though so that you can reflect on them here. So the broader question we have is whose voice is this, right? And you can get to that place if you're if there isn't something already that's coming to mind. It could be a belief or a habit, or a decision that you've been developing or wrestling with, and you feel strong, I should or should not do that, and just ask, whose voice is this? Who's telling me I should believe this? Who's telling me I should do this every day? Who's telling me that if I did this, it would be a bad decision? Whose voice is it? Go ahead and take some time to reflect, and I'll chat with you on the other side.
Thanks for taking the time to reflect with me. If anything came through, feel free to DM us on Instagram or to shoot us an email. And check out the link in the show notes to see if Camp Clarity would be something that would be a good fit for you. We get started on July 7th. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you as always for your expertise and take care.